Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. Last week's show, we got part one. I apologize for these uh, multi-part videos, but I really hate cutting out information that may be important to some people. So without further ado, let's get right into it with part two of building a display case. Well, the first thing we're going to do to start this off for today is I'm going to take a flush cut saw and uh, I'm going to cut these splines off and then we're going to sand everything so that the face or the, uh, the carcass itself looks pretty much complete. You can see I've got the splines cut off <clears throat> that contrast is really gonna pop when uh, a finish gets applied but for now they're cut they're fairly flush there's still a bit of a ridge there but that's gonna be taken care of with the sander so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off all the rest of the splines and then we'll carry on from there so I'm back and the first step we're gonna have to take care of is we're gonna unclamp that face frame and uh, we're going to have to cut some spline grooves into that face frame in the mitered corners. So I'm going to unclamp it and just like I did with the carcass, uh, I'm going to use my spline cutting jig and run it through the table saw to cut some 1 8 inch uh, spline grooves in that. The spline grooves are cut and you can see them right, right there. There you go. And uh, they're 1 8 of an inch splines. So now I need to cut the splines and glue them in. And I'm not going to go through the process of gluing them in, but I will show you what I do to actually cut them. And what I do is I rip a thin piece of whatever type of stock you're using. Um, I did it on maple here just so you could see the lines. This is just a little wider than what my um, spline groove is deep. And then from there, I just draw 45 lines, just like that, and I take it over to the scroll saw and I cut the individual pieces and then you end up with the splines. It's really not rocket science. I mean, you can do this on the band saw if you want, uh, you know, even cut them by hand, a little coping saw, you know, a little miter box, whatever you want to do. Um, but for this one here, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five here. So there's one spare. And like I said, I only did this on the maple just to show you guys so you'd be able to see the lines. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut some walnut splines and we're going to glue them into this face frame. So I'm going to start with the spline glue in, and I'll just show you one, and then, of course, you can repeat the process in your head if you like. So we've got the spline, and we're just going to apply a little blob of glue here, and uh, then we're going to apply a blob of glue on the other side. And <clears throat> you want to get a nice, even coating on this spline on the both triangle sides, and very importantly as well along the long straight edge so you can see that there a nice coating of glue all over and then you just want to slide the spline into its slot you want to make sure 100 percent that it is seated in there all the way to the bottom once you're happy with that seating like I said, Q-tips are your buddies. Just get in there with a the Q-tip and clean out the squeeze out. Just 
just like that. And I'm going to go ahead now and finish cleaning up all the rest of the squeeze out here and uh, glue in the other three splines and then we'll come back and see you. And with that we're back to playing the waiting game. Um, all the splines are glued in and I've got the face frame clamped onto the carcass. Um, no other reason just to give it somewhere to sit. It takes up a little less room, that's all. So we've got to sit here and wait for that to dry. It's going to be overnight. You may notice there's a lot of waiting in a project like this and that would be true. Um, there's a reason that I have more than one project usually going in the shop at a time and it's not because I'm super ambitious. It's because uh, I'm super impatient and I'm the type of guy that sees a sign that says caution wet paint and says oh yeah <laughs> they're right. So instead of poking it to see if it's dry and possibly screwing up my project I have another project on the go that I can just go over and work on that instead of messing with this one. So we're going to leave it overnight and then we're going to come back tomorrow trim up those splines and we're going to start sanding this project uh, to get it looking the way that we want it to. Well we're back it's the next day and uh, first thing we're going to work on today is we're going to cut those splines uh, with a flush cut just like we did in the carcass and uh, then we're going to sand the entire case so we can start you know making this look as I said in the last clip the way we want it. So let's cut those uh, splines. <laughs> was cut that rabbit joint in the back to accept the backer board. And the first thing we're going to do here uh, today is I'm going to take some quarter inch hardboard or MDF, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to cut it to dimension to fit inside that rabbit joint. ripped to the proper width and I've squared off the one far end. So I'm going to take the element of human error out of this and we're going to sit it in the case here where it's supposed to be and I'm just going to put a little mark here where it is that I want to cut it. And uh, by doing that we're going to eliminate any chances of reading a tape measure wrong. Um, so now we'll take this over to the radial arm saw, I'll lop this one piece off and uh, we'll do a test fit. I've cut this to length and now it's just a matter of doing a test fit to make sure that it fits in the case properly and uh, it does quite nicely I might add. Yeah it looks great, it looks great. <clears throat> the thing with the backer board here is because of this is only half inch thick walls and it's spanning quite a long area that backer board once secured in place is going to help to keep this thing uh, square when it's hanging on the wall so with that being said now uh, I'm going to move on to the next little step I just want to show you guys something here and what it is is in the lid we can see some imperfections in that um, we've got a raised area there right at the seam. Uh, normally this isn't that big of a deal. It can happen in clamp up, but there's going to be glass in this particular part. And an imperfection like that can snap your glass. So we're just going to trim that up and fix it with a, uh, with a simple chisel. Make sure your edge is sharp and just shave it down until you have both surfaces uh, 
completely flush with each other. So you can see here that I have a board clamped to the bench. And the reason for that is you really don't want to have your hand here holding this board while you're trying to chisel. Because I promise you, one of these days you're going to slip and that chisel's going into your hand. And if your chisel is sharpened, uh, especially if you use the method that I showcased not too long ago, um, you're going to end up in the ER uh, getting yourself a few stitches. So use the board to hold your piece and all you want to do, and I'm just going to sort of mimic it here, is you just want to get in here and trim it and just shave it lightly to get this surface and this surface here to be equal. So I'm going to go ahead and just check on the entire frame of this display case and get each one of these corners so that they're uh, level so that they're not going to break uh, the glass in, in the lid of this case. The next step I want to do is I want to route a finger pull in what will be the bottom of the lid uh, just to make it a little easier to, to open. It's, it's small little details like this that that make your project stand out. And what I've got is a cove bit installed here in the router table and uh, before I have all you YouTube please contact me say look at him sticking his his tape measure in there uh, powers off. Anyway, <clears throat> this case is 68 inches long so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to mark with a light pencil line a mark at 34 inches on our frame. Now that will be our center mark of course and I would like it to be um, about a six inch cove that's routed in there. So what I'm going to do is half of six of course is three. Yeah, welcome to Math 101. But I'm going to put a mark at <clears throat> three and three quarters out from that center mark on both sides and I'm going to explain that here as to why it is that I'm going to do that. Now I've zoomed in here for the explanation as to why it is that I've gone an extra three quarters on one side and three quarters on the other side so that's an extra inch and a half which is actually a seven and a half inch wide pull but that's not the case because what I'm going to do here due to the setup of my router table I have my fence set or here the edge of this board is three quarters of an inch from the center of my router bearing and this side on the in feed is three quarters of an inch away from the center of my router bearing. So by putting my marks at three quarters of an inch outside of where I want it routed, theoretically I should be able to just push my stock into my bit lining up that mark with the edge of the outfeed fence and that will place the center of my router bit at the edge of my six inch pull. As I slide it through, if I stop this piece with my second mark at the back end of the infeed table, just as it did when I plunged it in at this edge, the center of the router bit will be stopping at the uh, edge of the six inch mark because of course you're stopping at three quarters of an inch back. It's basically just a different method instead of using stops on your router fence because this piece is so long I'm just going to use the edges inside and outside edges here of my fence in order to uh, do the route. So let me just show you how we're going to do that. I've put a little bit of painter's tape on here just to uh, basically clarify for the video where my marks are. And we're going to go ahead and start this up and show you how I'm going to do this. And 
and there we can see there's the tape marks and on the back end a very nice little finger pull so again that's the little uh, the little extras that make your project stand out from other people's work so I'm going to go ahead and remove these uh, painters tape arrows and um, give it a little bit of a sanding and then we're going to move ahead to getting the hinge put onto this uh, display case the next step is to cut the recesses for the hinges and um, or the hinge in this case I'm using one long piano hinge and I kind of toyed with how I was going to do it and I eventually came up with uh, I'm going to do it on the router table but I just have to make sure that when routing that recess for the frame I give it extra support because it is a little um, I don't want to say flimsy but it's flexible and as you're routing it through and you're pushing it down the depth of that recess is going to be changed uh, by you pushing it through like that and it's kind of hard to explain but anyway I'm going to go ahead and route the recesses for these hinges and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Well the problem arises here in that I need a half inch cut along this edge in order to get the hinge to fit in there. The problem is this is only half an inch so as I route it out I'm going to be taking away all of the material here that's going to cause a problem because as that material is gone there's nothing left to support it on the table so it could potentially be flexed and pushed flat to the table and just continue to route up through the piece that's worst case scenario so what I'm going to do is use some 1 8 inch hardboard and put it here where the glass would go to support the piece and then we'll route from there. Well, the routing is done and um, now all that's left to do here for these particular recesses is to take a chisel and clean them up a bit and then uh, we're going to go ahead and mount the hinges. Um, I'm sure you guys know how to center punch, drill a pilot hole and screw in screws to attach a hinge so I don't think we need a video of that. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this hinge into this case and hopefully when we come back you're going to see a case with a hinged lid on it. Well we've got the hinge mortised in and uh, it works just fine. I think it'll, uh, it'll really come together once the glass is installed. Uh, I'm not going to make the glass installation a part of this video but I tell you the next thing here that uh, we're going to need to do is I'm going to sink some rare earth magnets in each of the corners both in the lid and in the case and that is going to uh, be the closure actually when the um, when the items are in the display so with that now we're going to go ahead and uh, countersink in some 3 8 inch holes to hold our rare earth magnets The next step we're at now is uh, basically taking apart the hinge and uh, we've got the holes drilled for the rare earth magnets but we're not going to glue those in until after a finish has been applied. So at this point in time what we're going to do is I'm going to flock the backer board and uh, apply the finish to the cabinet and of course then we're going to come back and we're going to install that backer board and uh, we're gonna move on from there. Once we get the backer board installed, we're pretty much done at that point in time. So um, we're gonna go ahead and I'll apply that finish and I'll come back and see you once all that is done. Over there. Well, it's been a little while and we're back. And what we've got here is we've got the display case, the backboard has all been flocked uh, in the color that uh, we want and it's just sitting in there right now. 
So now what we need to do is we need to mount that backboard. Now you could have yours removable, but for me, I want it permanently mounted. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance between the back of the backboard and the back of the actual cabinet. And from that, we're going to rip, from, uh, rip some strips and glue them all into place all around the perimeter of this cabinet. Well, I've taken a measurement here on the cabinet from the bottom of this hardboard or MDF to the top of our maple strip up here. And what we've actually got there is 5 sixteenths. But just to make it so that it doesn't... I don't really want it flush here with this trim piece. What I'd like to have it is I'd like to have it kind of recessed a little. So I'm going to cut some quarter inch strips. Um, but what I'm going to cut it out of is the original half inch boards that I use for the side. And the reason that I want to do that is this is a long span for a half inch board. And what I don't want to happen on the display case is for when it's hanging long ways on the wall, I don't want this to sag and come down and, and you know, start putting things out of shape. So by cutting the quarter inch strip from the half inch wide stock, what I'm actually getting is a half inch wide strip here, which will go a long way to giving this whole side here some rigidity. So what you want to do, or what I want to do on this case, is I want to put one strip on each uh, short end and one strip for the whole length along the bottom. I don't want to put a strip on the top and the reason for that is I want to use a French cleat hanger and that's what we're going to do at the top and I'm going to show you how to do that but first what we're going to do is get these strips put in, glued in and mounted. I've got some quarter inch strips cut now and what we're going to do is we're going to mark these and cut them to length to fit in here and glue them in place. So we're going to get some clamps and basically just clamp them down as such so that they're held in place and everything is nice and tight and then we're going to let that set up. Uh, so let's go ahead and cross cut these to their proper length and get them glued in to hold this backboard into place. Okay, so now we're talking about a French cleat, and what's the best way to describe it? I don't know, but I'm going to try. Let's, let's just say that this here is your wall, and there it sits. There's your wall. A French cleat is basically two boards that have one edge cut at 45 degrees, so that when they mate, you're able to hang something on it. So one board will get mounted on the wall just like such, with your 45 like that at the top. Your other board is glued onto your workpiece, or in this case, our cabinet. So here will be the side of our cabinet, of course like this. Let me just shade that a bit so you can see. And this is the back of our cabinet. This is the overhang where the backer board sits. So this is the backer board right here. So up inside that gap where we've been putting these quarter inch strips, the top strip is cut at a 45 at the bottom of it. So basically when you mount this strip to the wall, screwing it in to hit a stud, making sure that this is level, all you do is you take your piece and you drop it on top of here. And what happens is those two 45s mate and make it so that that uh, display piece or your case or whatever it is you're making hangs properly on the wall. 
sorry. Well, if that didn't make any sense to you, let me just show you here with this case that I made for my, my Dremel tool. Um, this here is mounted with a French cleat. And I'll just get in the way of the camera here. You'll have to excuse me for a second. But it just lifts off. And there you can see at the back there's a board. The top of that board is cut at a 45. And this board right here, this also has a 45 degree cut. You can probably see it right there. This is our 45 here. And our 45 is cut at the top of the piece on the wall. So when it hangs, just like I tried to illustrate just now, you just have to lower it down onto the piece and it sits there quite securely. This isn't going anywhere. So there you go, there's a French cleat. So now, let's get back to the display cabinet. So here's the top of our display cabinet and this is our top quarter inch strip. And let me just pull this out from underneath these clamps here and I'll show you. This is cut, it's very difficult to see on the camera, but this here is cut with the 45 on the bottom edge. And the strip that I will use for mounting it on the wall, this also has a 45 cut into it. And what I'll do is I'll drill and countersink holes all the way along this at 16 inch centers, just so that they can hit studs. I'll probably actually go 8 inch centers all the way along so they have the option to shift it one way or the other should things be a little bit funky. But with that being said now, we're going to go in, uh, go ahead and glue this retaining strip for the backer board in and we're going to make sure that that 45 degree cut is facing down uh, to the bottom of the cabinet in the orientation that I'm showing you here so that when it gets hung of course it will sit properly in the French cleat. Well that strip for the French cleat is glued and clamped into place and we really just have to wait for it to dry. We have this strip here for the wall that we've uh, done the mating cut for the French cleat and you can also see here that we have uh, drilled out and countersunk the holes to mount it to the wall and that will allow the uh, cabinet to just sit in this French cleat very nicely. Um, the next thing that we really need to do is take our face frame and we will be holding uh, the glass in there with some mirror retaining clips and that's just drilling some holes and screwing them into place. I don't really think we need a video of that. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to put this whole thing back together and uh, we'll show you what it is that we ended up with. And there you have it. A hockey stick display case. Um, there is a little extra small walnut frame in here. Uh, this is actually for the certificate of authenticity uh, for the hockey stick because it is autographed by the entire team uh, from the NHL. So that's wasn't part of this build, it was a little extra. But the magnets for the actual lid of the display case are rare earth magnets. We drilled the holes for those earlier and uh, they ended up getting glued in with some uh, gap filling CA glue. So there you have it. Guys, this isn't uh, a video about building a display case for a hockey stick. It's uh, showing methods of building a display case. This is quite a long case. I don't know if you'd ever really have a use for that kind of a case or not. But uh, I know that there are some of you that have display cases for various things. And uh, now you know the method of going ahead and making it. So I'm going to uh, have to order a piece of glass for this. And it will be installed uh, with some retainers. And uh, I guess I will... See you again next week with yet another woodworking video. Guys, thanks for watching.